Hello and welcome to a new episode of Retro Mel's Unboxing. As always, in these videos I will show some of the retro goodies I got from places like the Dutch version of eBay. Let's start the unboxing, as always, with a small box. Something wrapped in red plastic. Always good to check if the box is completely empty. This nifty PCB is a Kira. The Kira lets you use a variety of Commodore keyboards as USB keyboards. Something that can for instance help with mounting a Raspberry Pi in an original Commodore case. It even has the same connectors on the side to give it an original Commodore appearance. I will definitely be trying this in a future video. I think I will use this to test the keyboard that came with the Breadbin C64C case that I found in a box of Scrap Commodore 64 motherboards. Moving on to this next box, that's got something inside that I'm quite excited for. This contains a Color Maximite 2, a modern day 8 bit computer. The designer was inspired by computers like the TRS80 and the Apple II, so I think this will be very much up my alley. Definitely will be trying this out soon. Next up was a box that needs no knife or scissors to open because this was left in my front yard by the delivery company and since it rained a lot that night and I wasn't informed by the tracking app that it was delivered it spent quite some time outside. Let's hope there's no damage to the items inside. As you can see by the box this comes all the way from the United States. Luckily it's all wrapped in plastic. The computer appears to be dry. So this is a TRS-80 MC10, a wonderful small form factor computer. From the moment I saw this computer at the museum that I also visited in my last video, I knew I really wanted one. They rarely show up on the Dutch version of eBay, so I spent some time waiting for a good deal on the actual eBay. And this one was the one I found. It comes with the power supply and not a lot more. This is a machine that only outputs NTSC RF, which makes it a bit harder to use a monitor here in a PAL region. Let's see in a future video what we can do with it. This is a box that I think was dropped off by the seller himself, since there's no barcode on it. Finally, the person at the door said, here's a parcel, just like someone from the postal company would say. But anyhow, the contents are more important. The first thing that we find is a SCSI cable. And then this device, which is a Bernoulli drive. I'm not quite familiar with these and don't know if this one works. I do believe these are worm drives, but I'm not sure. This box will come in handy with the Bernoulli drive as it contains some unused disks. I'll see if I can find some used disks as well. And of course, I'm on the lookout for a SCSI card from one of my systems to put the drive to the test. A smaller box with a lot of small pieces inside. These are used mini cassettes produced by Philips. In this case they can be used with a Philips P2000 computer. The one I also showed in my last video. Always exciting to get these and see what kind of software you will find on them. Although it's not uncommon for them not to work. I will be attempting soon to put these on the archive part of my website. This was a more unexpected purchase. I think most retro lovers will recognize situations like this one, where you put in, let's say, a very low ball offer and the seller immediately replies, it's a deal. What I find mostly happens in these cases is that the item will be pickup only, but luck had it and this wonderful CNET Data Systems laptop was sent to my doorstep. And without a doubt, this is the biggest laptop in my collection. It's even difficult to get it correctly in the picture. It has a very nice keyboard. The power supply was a bit confusing for me when it read on the back that it took 120 volts input. The wall outlets here are put 240. Oh, and as you can see, this is either a model 150 or 308. A quick look on Google and Wikipedia tells me that this laptop was probably part of the CNET C180 series. More on that and this interesting machine in the future. Probably a computer TLC because I need to take a look at the faulty disk drive and maybe we can put some internal storage on it. I think it will also be nice to give that giant display some tests. I don't expect it to be very good though. This giant weirdly cut up moving house box weighed a ton. Not weird since it has a large amount of paper inside. TRS-80 Model 3 related stuff, starting with the manual for a DMP400 printer. I really like this getting started with the TRS-80 book. Really a lovely timepiece. Here are some books on debugging. 
This is interesting as it's a book on converting Model 1 programs to be used with the TRS-80 Model 3. Tiny Pascal user manual, Scripsit book, Model 3 technical reference manual. Ooh, and some cassette tapes. Lovely tape labels with the Radio Shack logo. None of these are programs, I believe. They are all just lessons on how to use the programs. I have a weird rebatched Model 3 in storage. It needs a new filter capacitor, but for the rest I think it functions quite well. Only have not yet been able to find software disks for it. But I believe I should be able to make those using a DOS PC. The lessons on these tapes I'll definitely make a video about for my retro archive. More documentation I found in this box. This is a programmer's reference guide for the Commodore 64. I hope this will tell me more on how it is to program for the Commodore 64. This is not everything in the box, because there's also a box of 8-inch floppy disks. I always try to pick these up for cheap, in the hopes of finding some disks for my Sanyo MPC 3000. Apologies for the shaky image. These have some vague labels. HDR1 to 3. Oh, this is an interesting label. Property of IBM. Doesn't really look IBM ish though. So, with some hot air, I removed the label on top to see what's below, but sadly, there was nothing to see. I tried with some water if I could make some text appear, but this probably only works in films. The other discs mainly have labels saying they're a property of Honeywell. Boo! Turns out that there was, or is, a French computer company that mainly back in the day was producing mainframes. Any suggestions on what these discs might have been used for are very welcome. This package came all the way from the UK and contains a Commodore calculator. Nice that it has its original packaging. Oops, I was wrong, this is not a calculator, this is a portable mini computer. One that only does calculations, probably. Let's take a look at the actual calculating mini computer in a portable form factor. I really like the blue and white. I think it was nicely preserved because it spent a lot of time in the protective case. Serial number 41277. I have a couple more Commodore calculators that I want to show on my channel, but for those including this one I will have to find a compatible power supply first. Next up, something modern. I want to get better at repairing computers and think that a device like this might come in handy. I got this one for the purpose of trying to learn how they work. This is a Regal DS1102, a two-channel 100 MHz oscilloscope. I would be lying to say that I can operate this device at this moment, but I hope to find some good tutorials and see if I can get better at probing. I'm excited to see what the computer in this box is like, since I've never used one before. This is a Texas Instruments TI-994A. I'm surprised to see how small the keyboard is, which isn't the greatest to type on. The computer came with a lot of add-ons, like these cables to connect the tape deck, the PSU, in fact I think it came with two PSUs, an RF modulator, that is the biggest one I've seen yet. Also, there was a cartridge game called Indoor Soccer, I'm not too big on sports games though. The case is a bit damaged and scratched, so I'll be seeing if I can find a way to fix that. Also, I will be looking for something that lets me use something like an SD card to load games or other programs. Next up is a book that I got. Another YouTube channel got me very interested in the works of Paul Horowitz, mainly of course the arts of electronics. This is the second edition. I already got the ones that are still available in normal bookstores, the third edition and the learning book. Very interesting stuff. Next up, another system. I was very excited to be adding this one to my collection because I thought these were going to be hard to get because other collectors would be out for them as well. Here is the keyboard. Yes, this is going to be a Commodore machine. It has a German layout, so it is a quartz instead of QWERTY. Let's get the computer out of its plastic. This is a Commodore PC 10-3, a very interesting system that I tested and works great. I think there will be a video with the computer in the future soon, testing some floppies probably. I love the form factor of dual half-height 5.25 inch disk drives. The HDD it is supposed to have from the factory is sadly removed, it was one of those hard cards, so it's probably died a long time ago. Wouldn't mind having one of those in my collection though. I thought if I wanted to focus a little bit more on trying to fix computers, that this would come in handy too. This is a Commodore 64 test harness, for use with a diagnostic cartridge I believe. 
more Commodore stuff. This is a 1570 disk drive. It is a single-sided version of the 1571 and was designed for the Commodore 128. When I get to do some restorations on my Commodore 128, I will be putting this disk drive to the test as well. I'm afraid that the next item is also Commodore related. This was a period of expanding that part of my collection quite a bit. This power supply and the form factor of the disk will probably already give away to most people what kind of computer we're talking about. Here it is, the Amiga 500. I've said before that I'm very much unfamiliar with Amigas, so when this Amiga 500 turned out to be a good deal, I snapped it up with a whole bunch of disks. As you can see, it needs some retrobyte and a deep clean, of which I of course will make a TLC episode. The disks I will attempt to archive on my website. They seem to be mainly games. Moving on to the last box of this unboxing episode. I got these two computers from a seller that never replied to my messages, just only sent me a request for payment. In this leather pouch we can find an interesting pocket computer. I really love these small nifty devices. It has the printer and cassette adapter with it. It also has the cables and an adapter for the interface. Sadly no power supply, and it comes with some documentation. Moving on to the next computer, the one I'm even more excited for. This is an Epson HX20. A lovely machine and a form factor I really enjoy, similar to the TRS-80 Model 100. As you can see it has a small Sony MC60 tape inside it. I've said it a couple times before in this episode, on my website you can find my retro archive, which at this moment is still mostly emptiness, waiting to be filled. But in fact, when you scroll down and click on the Epson HX, you will be sent to the page where you can find the contents of the tape that I uploaded in a WAV or MP3 file type. In a future video, we will be testing out the Epson and see what it can be used for. Fingers crossed it works. Thanks for watching. <laughs>